Hello, good morning. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Wednesday the 23rd of August. I'm reading Common Worship, Daily Prayer, Morning Prayer on Wednesday in Ordinary Time from the Church of England. You'll find it in the book towards the beginning after prayer during the day, online at Aremus Daily Prayer, downloadable as an app for Apple or Android device. You're welcome to join me in the building or by Zoom, code on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook and the audio will be on my Dominic Dobel YouTube channel presently. Welcome, however you are joining us. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. A song of God's glorious name. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised, out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out. You have made them little lower than the angels, and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands, and put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, send me the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Psalm 119, verses 105 to 128, our psalm this morning. 119 from verse 105. You'll find the psalms at the back of the book. Now deal with your servant according to your faithful love. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and will fulfil it to keep your righteous judgments. I am troubled above measure. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept the free will offering of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My soul is ever in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. <coughs> your testimonies <coughs> have I claimed as my heritage for ever, for they are the very joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfil your statutes, always, even to the end. I hate those who are double-minded, but your law do I love. You are my hiding place and my shield, and my hope is in your word. Away from me, you wicked, I will keep the commandments of my God. Sustain me according to your promise that I may live, and let me not be disappointed in my hope. Hold me up, and I shall be saved, and my delight shall be ever in your statutes. You set at naught those who depart from your statutes, for their deceiving is in vain. You consider all the wicked as dross, therefore I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. I have done what is just and right. O oh, give me not over to my oppressors. For surety for your servant, stand surety for your servant's good. Let not the proud oppress me. My eyes fail with watching for your salvation and for your righteous promise. O oh, deal with your servant according to your faithful love, and lead me, teach me your statutes. I am your servant, O oh, grant me understanding, that I may know your testimonies. It is time for you to act, O oh, Lord, for they frustrate your law. Therefore I love your commandments, above gold, even much fine gold. Therefore I direct my steps by all your precepts, and all false ways I utterly abhor. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. O deal with your servant according to your faithful love.
Join past our first reading to the song of the word of the Lord, turning back in our books to morning prayer on Wednesday in ordinary time. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Return to the Lord, who will have mercy, to our God, who will richly pardon. Our first Bible reading is from Micah, which is about five books before the end of the Hebrew Scriptures, so if you are following in the Holy Bible with both covenants printed, turn to two-thirds of the way through and move back towards the beginning. Uh, Malachi is the last. Two or three books further back, you'll find Micah. We're looking for chapter 3, so that's the large number in the margin, is the chapter number Micah. Chapter 3. Also scroll back to it if you're following electronically. It's just before the canticle we read a moment ago. <clears throat> and I said, listen, you rulers of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel, should you not know justice, you who hate the good and love the evil, who tear the skin off my people and the flesh off their bones, who eat the flesh of my people, flay their skin off them, break their bones in pieces and chop them up like meat in a kettle, like flesh in a cauldron. Then they will cry to the Lord, but he will not answer them. He will hide his face from them at that time because they have acted wickedly. Thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who led my people astray, who cry peace when they have something to eat, but declare war against those who put nothing into their mouths. Therefore it shall be night to you without vision, and darkness to you without revelation. The sun shall go down upon the prophets, and the day shall be black over them. The seers shall be disgraced, and the diviners put to shame. They shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer from God. But as for me, I am filled with power, with the Spirit of the Lord, and with justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression, and to Israel his sin. Here they see rulers of the house of Jacob, and chiefs of the house of Israel, who abhor justice and pervert all equity, who build Zion with blood, and Jerusalem with wrong. Its rulers give judgment for a bribe, its priests teach for a price, its prophets give oracles for money. Yet they lean upon the Lord and say, Surely the Lord is with us. No harm shall come upon us. Therefore, because of you, Zion shall be ploughed as a field, Jerusalem shall become a heap of ruins, and a mountain of the house a wooded height. <clears throat> so typically in the prophets we've got the preacher trying to get God's people us as the hearer today uh, recognise our shortcomings that we can avoid the wrath of God it's perhaps a little bit like somebody in a classroom at school who's just gone for a wee comes back and tells us that the teacher is coming so we need to I don't know, get down off our tables get our books out stop um, scrolling through Facebook and start doing some of our classwork or whatever it is we might be doing and uh, sort ourselves out and um, sometimes oh, Jeremiah Isaiah they're the more comprehensive and they deal with a number of different aspects of society uh, I'm not sure we might come across Micah dealing with other things that are going on in and around Jerusalem. But today, just like with Amos, a significant uh, target for his opprobium are those who have privilege. Heads of Jacob, rulers of Israel. So there, there's the two houses. Jacob is David's lot, Israel is the rest. For a time they were ruled by one king, sometimes they were ruled separately as separate nations, the northern and the southern tribes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but that first paragraph is shocking, and it's shocking to make us look. <coughs> it's like people who put clips up on Facebook of, um, I don't know, intensive farming practices or hunting. Um, they won't give you a picture in the distance of uh, people trotting about on horses with um, Vaughan Williams or some um, grand classical music, English music playing in the background, they'll suddenly give you a close-up of um, an animal with all its entrails out and barking and shouting to grab your attention. <clears throat> and so it is here. This is uh, sort of, if you like, 
tabloid stuff. It's clickbait. Tear the skin off my people. Break their bones in pieces. Chop them up like meat in a kettle. That's interesting. That would have been the way meat would have been prepared. But also, that's uh, maybe a tangential reference to temple worship, but it's not very clearly that. Mostly, we're talking about, do you not know justice? And then this example, that the way they're living is reducing God's people to skin and bones. Any... Um, a connection or parallel to uh, contemporary life in countries uh, of today um, are in fact entirely appropriate, I would say. So we need as church to speak up for those who would make more money for the nationally rich, whose uh, wealth is in stocks and shares. Bizarrely, the money of those who count their money and wealth in actual pounds, shillings and pence has been stripped from the majority and given to the few. Um, and we're all wanting it, happy with it, voting for it, and we're blaming people, a handful of people that are bobbing about on the, over the seas coming here. They are the scapegoat of the moment, and they're only coming from countries that those same rich and powerful, um, I would suggest, have been involved in destabilising to maintain their security. Hear this, you who are in charge of Jacob and Israel, who abhor justice and pervert equity. Where you live, the things you put your trust in. Jerusalem will become a heap of ruins. Zion ploughed as a field. And in these terms, ploughed as a field wasn't a good thing. In these terms, um, a city being wooded was not a good thing. Those are suggestions, examples of what was civilization, um, if you like, uh, being desolate. Mark 5 from 35, then our second Bible reading, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Gospels, so if you're following your Holy Bible, turn back to the two-thirds of the way through point. Uh, that gives you the beginning of the Second Covenant Greek Scriptures. Matthew, Mark, and then, so, so Matthew is first, Mark is the second, so we're looking for Mark, actually. Once we found Mark, we're looking for the fifth chapter, a large number at the, in the margin, ahead of the paragraph, chapter 5, and we're going from the small numbers in the text, verse 35, Mark 5, from 35. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead, or I trouble to teach any father. But overhearing what the, further, what they said, Jesus said, to the, but overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people wailing and weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said, her talitha kum, which means little girl get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement and he strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. So this is sort of part two of yesterday's story where Jesus was called by the synagogue ruler and he was waylaid by um, a woman. Um, he was bleeding and he heals her. And then we come back <coughs> to the synagogue ruler <coughs> and uh, he's just dealing with the woman. And so people say, it's too late, your daughter's dead. Jesus says, do not fear, only believe. Then he cuts himself off from the crowd and takes only his inner crowd. He's the ones who were with him in the um, transfiguration and uh, one or two other sort of salient moments. John, his bestie, so this is kind of inner crowd with uh, John being his best mate. And described here as the brother of James, if we didn't know. <clears throat> and uh, he gets to the house. And they've got professional mourners wailing loudly. When he says she's not dead but asleep, they laugh. They actually, they laugh at him. So he was, as far as they were all concerned, properly dead. They were mourning. Who knows how long he'd been dead, she'd been dead. Um, and that's an interesting line. The child is not dead but sleeping. So the um, Gospels talk about this word sleep as a metaphor of death. It might have been a 
common local way of talking about death. It might have been a colloquialism, but it was also very definitely, uh, if you like, almost a theological or religious um, technical term for Jesus, who did describe people who were dead as being asleep. Um, whether he meant by that that it was only temporary, um, that it wasn't as uh, grievous, um, that death wasn't as bad as all that. It was just sleep, which is much more positive, if you like. Um, this was written by and for people who persecuted, so they would have known people who had died. Um, Jesus died and came back to life in this story, which is much more like sleep than the death that we generally know. He takes the, those, that small group, his in-crowd, in with the parents of the girl and just says, get up. Talitha Kum, I don't know whether that's Aramaic language it is, but we're, told, we're given a translation, where, I don't know whether the translation was added in the Greek when the Gospel was written. Um, maybe it's Hebrew, translation to Greek, don't know what the original was. And we're told not only does the girl get up, but she starts to walk about, and she's 12. So we are told she is 12 here in this account. Um, we're told that the woman who issued blood had been suffering for 12 years, connecting those two sort of ages of um, female life And people were overcome with amazement. They laughed and they were overcome with amazement. That reminds me of a story of Abraham and Sarah. Sarah laughed when she was told she was going to have a child. They called the child Laugh or Laughter, Isaac. And he tells them not to tell anybody. That's a similar story throughout Mark. Don't tell anybody. Why is that? Maybe it's because people turn and believe. Maybe they'll receive that healing. Maybe they're living amongst persecuted people who don't understand them. And they don't actually want them to receive the grace of God that they have received themselves. Maybe they give them a sense of superiority, of uh, secret knowledge, which shouldn't be shared. I don't know, maybe there's something that sort of Gnostic uh, understanding coming in. But there may be something going on for you that you want sorted. There may be something you've been pursuing even for 12 years. Maybe a child yourself that is sick. And then things get worse, even unto death, however you want to understand that as a metaphor for your circumstance. You go for help and things get worse. A relationship, you start to talk to people, mediation, and uh, for a time you decide actually on the face of that mediation you are going to live apart for a bit. Um, things may get worse before they get better, but uh, Jesus draws people with him to support the family, and uh, the particular matter in hand is resolved remarkably. You may even laugh at people who have hope in that circumstance. And whether it is actually somebody who's died that we want to come back to life again, whether it is somebody who has effectively died, who is asleep, effectively estranged from us, effectively dead, coming back, be open in faith to God actually restoring life, restoring your life to you. If somebody has lost a child or a daughter with a let be situation, it is devastating, and whilst we can't necessarily call everybody back from the dead, we can engage with God and draw God into that circumstance <clears throat> for help and support in our grief to cope with the um, mental health challenges in the face of living through that circumstance. We may need to gather people around us to help us do that. And we don't need necessarily to tell everybody that that's what we're going through. We can do it excluding crowds and not tell anybody afterwards. They can see and find out what they wish. But it's our own engagement with this little support group, with God in our circumstance, that will restore life. Again, however we understand that, I'm not saying that all who are dead will come back to life again if we pray for them. <clears throat> but we can take this as a metaphor. But there will be some, there are some, who are as good as dead, who are restored to life through prayer. To the response we back in morning prayer on Wednesday in ordinary time. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am, I am always with you. <clears throat> you hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. The Song of Zechariah. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. 
Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called to the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. <clears throat> So, Son, Essence 3 and 1, 1 in 3, we come to you at the beginning of this day and uh, we thank you for um, helping us understand our roles as prophets speaking against injustice and for the oppressed, hearing their voice, amplifying that voice, enabling that voice. And also that story of hope that uh, even in death, we are involved, <clears throat> if we move away from uh, those who would just seek sort of titillation and entertainment and deal with the, the heart of the matter with a small group in private, in prayer, in your presence, there can be resolution. Let us have the faith for that. Let us not fear any belief. Well, Council of Churches, prayers for Liberia and Sierra Leone. We are thankful for the diverse ethnic and religious groups who have lived together in peace and harmony, especially the Muslims and Christians in Sierra Leone. We pray for the majority of the people who are still impoverished, that adequate services and policies will be provided that enable them to live with dignity and good health. Christian Action, Search and Education, God of Justice, we are grieved about the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 on the world's poorest nations and the most vulnerable people in every country. Please inspire powerful international agencies and national governments to invest more generously in future healthcare to provide for the most vulnerable. And uh, we pray that we as communities will ask our government to do that and not maintain instability and low levels of care overseas to maintain our own strength and power as a global nation. <coughs> to endeavour to do the same. From Green Christian. Scientists are calling for urgent global action to address the escalating issue of marine plastic pollution as a recent study identified deadly ocean hotspots, writes Yasmin Dahoun. Dahoun. Scientists have realized the ocean where some of the world's most threatened seabirds face the highest risk of potentially deadly plastics. Seabirds often mistake small fragments of floating on the surface of the water for food or ingest plastic that's already been eaten by their prey. Ingesting small fragments can lead to poisoning, internal injuries and starvation. It's a 25, 26-year study assessed movements of 7,000 birds, individual birds from 77 species. <clears throat> and uh, the areas of highest plastic risk, Mediterranean, Black Seas, Northeast Pacific, Northwest Pacific, South Atlantic, Southwestern, Southwest Indian Oceans. We pray for follow-up of that to be organisations to come up with plans and ideas for vacuuming up, filtering out. Thank you for those that are already doing it and we pray we might be able to step up those efforts. The Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is our concern for the environment. With Pope Francis we pray, O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. And if a cycle prayer on Wednesday, we pray for teachers, both those uh, on holiday from schools, but also those who teach adults and others independent living and uh, hobbies and crafts, <coughs> languages, to so broaden our experience of life. And uh, we thank you for them. Pray that they'll have rest, adequate support and income to maintain their 
satisfaction and fruitfulness <coughs> and uh, pleasure in that occupation. We pray that they will see people's circumstances improve, perhaps even above and beyond their own abilities, as they um, teach and help others learn more and do more and become more fulfilled in and of themselves. <coughs> we thank you for our people. <coughs> and today we pray for the wardens at Sir Peter's Holton, Chris and John, uh, Jonathan, Sir Peter's Weniston, uh, Ginny uh, standing in at St Andrew's Bramfield, Alison also is Blythe and also standing in, Mike at St Peter's Thorrington. We pray for the other officers on those PCCs, uh, PCC members, electoral in Holton includes Jill, Helen, Anthony, Dot, Betty, Mary, Dan, Marjorie, Joan, Julian, Linda, Eric, Phyllis, Edith, Jim and Jackie, <coughs> and in um, Weniston will include Alison, also the Margaret, Brimfield, Golson, Goldsmith, Angela, Mary, Moy, Francis, Valerie, Dorothy, Jane, Robert, Colin, Jennifer, Felicity, Vivian, Graham, Ruth, John, Sally, David, Diana, Joanna, I know Heather's died, Jean, Suzanne, Clive, Francis, Anne and Colin. <coughs> and so we thank you uh, for these. Pray you draw others into those committees, um, doubling the number of those that are serving in each uh, in particular, bringing in people who can be uh, wardens, treasurers and secretaries to support those who are doing those roles, as they are perhaps under duress. Pray a blessing on all the events that are coming up, that they will uh, increase the involvement and engagement of the communities, that the communities will take over looking after, will take on the looking after the church, that the faithful may worship as just one event among many that those churches sustain and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.